Hello, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, an identity crisis in Bosnia. We'll look at the controversy surrounding the country's first post-war census. Our digital producer Malika Balao is here looking out for your live feedback. Malika, our online community is a little bit like our own personal census. Mm -hmm. What are they saying about the Bosnian census? Yeah, that's funny that we are taking their pulse. And the thing I love about doing Bosnia shows mm -hmm. is that we always get tons of video comments Great. from our community. Today is no different. A lot of them seem to be pessimistic though. Ah. And there's a feeling that this is not going to lead anywhere good. And that's okay. summed up in this video comment from Ismir. Have a listen. This is not going to bring anything good to Bosnian people. It will just the cement divide that's created in 1990s. It should be cancelled and reorganized sometimes later in the future in, mu in much more efficient and a better way. Well, that's what Ismir had to say. We want to hear from you as well. So tweet us your comments and your questions with hashtag AJStream. Joining us in the studio, we have Yasmin Mijanovic. He is a visiting political scholar, a political science scholar at Columbia University. He's also a contributor to the website Politics Respun, and he writes about news in the Balkans. Yasmin, it's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. How much have you written about the census in Bosnia? I've primarily been tweeting about it, and I'm preparing some more academic work and sort of emotionally gearing up to write a blog piece. All right, OK. You can just add all those tweets up together, and maybe you'll have the blog piece. That's the idea. All right, so we're going to give you a little bit of backstory, first of all, before we start our main conversation. In a country as multicultural as Bosnia, the question of identity is not always easy to answer and it's especially not easy when the population count determines the amount of political power your ethnic group can have. This year's population census is Bosnia's first in 22 years and it's the first since the country's war where ethnic cleansing killed about 100,000 people and displaced half the country. On the census, many will identify themselves as Bosniaks, Serbs or Croats. But this time around, a youth movement is promoting the idea of favouring Bosnian citizenship over ethnicity. A trial run last year found that about a third of the population called themselves Bosnian. So, will Bosnia's first post-war census reinforce ethnic divisions or could it be an opportunity for national unity? So, joining us to discuss this, we have Adnan Huskic. He's a lecturer at the Sarajevo School of Science and Technology. He helped advise the government during the early phases of the national census. In Pristina, we have Ivana Svetkovic Bajrovic. She is a program officer with the Washington based National Endowment for Democracy, and she was recently in Bosnia as an unofficial observer for the census. And via Skype in Sarajevo, we have Darko Barkin. He's a member of the civil society group Coalition Equality, and they are calling on people to declare themselves Bosnians on this year's census. So, Adnan, Ivana, Darko, Yasmin, it's great to have you all here in the stream. I'm going to start though with some Bosnian basics, because so everybody gets why this conversation is so important. Ivana, you have the short straw. Take us back to <laughs> the Dayton Peace Accord, how that connects to with the Bosnian constitution and then why that's causing so much trouble or controversy now with the census, the short version. So, well, Femi, you summed up very nicely the effects of the bloody conflict that lasted from 1992 to 1995. In 1995, this conflict was ended when the international community brokered what is now known as Dayton Peace Accords. And the Dayton Peace Accords, among other things, created a governance system that was really designed to allow for power sharing between the three primarily the three main ethnic groups, the Bosniaks, the Croats, and the Serbs. And uh, the census of 1991 was then used, uh, the results of the census of 1991 were used to uh, apportion um, the political power in the country and to basically design this power sharing model. What that has done, however, it has really left a whole segment of the population disenfranchised. In the constitution, this, um, everyone who is essentially um, not declared as one of the three ethnic main ethnic groups is uh, concerned to be the, uh, considered to be the other with capital O. And among other things, uh, these, this particular group um, cannot, for example, run for the uh, presidency of the country or the upper chamber of the parliament. Um, the aspect of the constitution that was found to be not just unconstitutional, but also um, not, not unconstitutional, but in violation of a number of international and European human rights standards. So it's, there's many problems with this system, which is very cumbersome, very expensive to run. And uh, this, um, 
um, like I said, the system is entirely designed as a result of the 1991 census, which is the last census Bosnia has held. Okay, thank you. We really appreciate that background. So bearing that in mind, Adnan, this is just a census, right? Why would there be controversy? You helped design it in the early phases. Were you expecting there to be so much controversy? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't exp uh, I didn't I didn't help design the uh, uh, the questionnaire. I was part of the coalition that worked very hard to make sure that this uh, uh, this particular forms allow for freedom of expression. That's the only thing we wanted to achieve to make sure that people can express themselves um, freely. Right. The problem with the census, though, is that. Um, um, we're talking about the identity politics here in Bosnia, we're talking about the numbers, so everybody is very much interested to see how many of us are here. Actually, what we are going to see though is probably the fact that Bosnia is no longer as multi-ethnic as it was, uh, that the regions are very much homogeneous in the sense uh, that people are not living in, in this patchwork anymore that we used to live in before the war with probably with the exception of some of the uh, larger cities. But uh, uh, I would say that's only part of the problem. The other part of the problem is what will happen after we have the results? Um, how will that influence or inform the debate we have in this country? And what do they mean? What do these results really mean? Um, for instance, what will happen if there is another group, if another group emerges that doesn't belong into these three ethnic groups that Ivana mentioned earlier, that are now constituting uh, or, or, or constituent elements of the power sharing in Bosnia? Okay. What if there is a group that is more numerous than any of these groups? And will that, and how will that actually influence the debate on the future setup of this country? Well, Yasmin's nodding, Malika's nodding. Whose nod shall I go to first? Malika, your call. Well, I, I have to answer to the community, so I can I go first? All right, Yasmin, <laughs> sorry. Thank you very Your much. Second. Well, Yasmin, I, I will direct this to you because online I'm seeing a split sentiment. On the one hand, you have tweets like Caroline's, who's optimistic. She says, the census in Bosnia is an opportunity for individuals to have voices louder than their inherently discriminatory, or discriminatory government. On the other hand, you have a Facebook comment like this from Selma, who says, the census sounds like a progressive step for Bosnia, but I'm among those two million displaced ones. I guess we stay out of the list. So who's being counted and who's not being counted? Well, I think a great number of people are not being counted, myself included. Uh, I mean, there's an entire generation of Bosnian and, uh, Bosnians and Herzegovinians who have grown up abroad, young people primarily, but also their parents. And I think the point that Adnan raised was a very good one. Uh, the people that probably are going to have the hardest time declaring themselves on the census, even though it's ostensibly supposed to be a private document, are going to be those people who want to declare themselves as Bosnians, as coming from mixed marriages, as, God forbid, Yugoslavs, you know, uh, Roma, Jewish, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because the situation is so politically charged and the census itself is being contested as though it were an election uh, rather than a private document. So and you mentioned that you are among those who won't be counted. Why is that? Well, because I've simply been out of the country for too long. Uh, my, my, uh, my displacement has been legally institutionalized, so I simply do not fit into the category anymore of being part of that polity. So let's talk about the actual practical matter of counting. Darko, how is the counting being done? Well, uh, the, the counting is done in a way that uh, the enumerators, in a traditional actually way, the enumerators are going to every household in the country and they are actually asking the people the questionnaire that's a predefined questionnaire and then they are writing down all the all the answers that they are giving and basically in the end they are uh, giving the the forms back to the central counting place I mean there have been numerous problems with the whole process so but, but I'm just gonna explain the process for the for the start and actually it should be then scanned into a, a, a software that that will do pretty much all the all the counting and all the all the all the necessary statistics will, will come out of the, of the of that software so that's basically very shortly how the process looks like. So it's literally people going and the, and the, um, the officials going l door to door, each person in Bosnia is physically filling out that census, which is a remarkable, so about 4 million people you're talking about, Darko? Yes, and we're, we're, we're talking about 20,000 enumerators 
that have been hired to do the job and we are talking about four I mean approximately four million people nobody nobody will, would, would guess know until point, after the census yes pretty of course. Much four million. so Ivana you've been looking at the census and how it's been proceeding it started October the 1st it should be finishing October the 15th so we're literally right in the middle right now what are you seeing any problems Plenty of problems, and actually Darko has been the lead of, of this uh, Equality Coalition, which is not just uh, uh, working with the people to encourage them to declare themselves as Bosnian and Herzegovinian, but also to encourage people to report any irregularities in the census. And he can probably go into greater detail, but some of the things that I've heard in casual conversations throughout the country is that uh, the um, the enumerators are poorly informed they very often do not explain the nature of the two most uh, politically contentious questions and that is that is the question on ed ethnic identity and a question on religion which are both optional um, and then there's a number of other irregularities for example up until uh, just a couple of days ago there was not a central repository or even uh, a place for safekeep of these forms that the enumerators are filling out, but often the enumerators were taking these forms home, and you can only imagine how many privacy uh, issues uh, that raises because the census form contains every piece of information about the person, including their personal number. Sure, of course, Malika. Well, Ivana just mentioned two of the optional but controversial uh, questions that are being asked. We have a video comment on that very topic. Have a listen. Instead of using this census to obtain socio-economic data about the Bosnian society after the war, the ethnocentric uh, political system is trying to uh, use it to cement the ethnic character of, uh, of this system. So all public opinion is talking about two optional questions, the ethnic identity and the religious identity. So Adnan, on the back of that, there's also this tweet from Giresh who says, a national census is fine, but why do they need the ethnic numbers and what's the purpose? Do people, do most people know that that's an optional question at all? No, definitely not. Uh, the problem is, and this is something that I witnessed myself once the enumerators came to my place, is that uh, they failed to mention at the very beginning that these two questions are optional. And now, uh, why do we have these questions? Uh, of course, that's absolutely what the uh, the previous commenter said. Uh, it is the desire of the current political elites to essentially cement the situation as it is today, and this is the result not only of war, of a very large demographic displacement, but also the fact that this has been going on ever since the war. Uh, there was no return proper as it was in a way envisaged, envisaged by, the, uh, by the creators of the datum. Uh, so what we're doing right now, and this is why we haven't had uh, a census in more than 20 years, is we are basically going to do a snapshot of the situation that is going to be used as a basis for staffing in the public administration, which is by far the most important question for the political elites, because based on this census, we are going to do the stuffing in the local communities. We are going to know how many people will work who are Bosniak, Serbs, Croat, or even others now. So this is why it was so contentious to begin with, and this is why it took so much time before this was this was even done. Now, of course, on the other side, the most important segment of it, and that is the fact that we are trying to create or collect all the data needed to basically do uh, concrete planning if you want to do any any form of development planning is going to be in a way invalidated by including these two questions which became a political problem so now we have a problem with people who are refusing to open the door now we have a problem with people who are not uh, informed what is this being used for so they are not uh, openly talking about their possessions wow. they are not openly talking about the jobs they've undertaken in the, in the, in the several several the past several months which means that the data that we need will in a way be invalidated by the, the whole fuzziness of the process that was created by including these two questions and making it very political. Yasmin. Absolutely. I mean, this is, this, is, this is being used as a political document to, as numerous commentators now have said, to institutionalize the post-war constitutional order in Bosnia. These political parties that run the country, basically, and that the European Union treats as the only legitimate representatives uh, 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 in the country were, will look at this uh, census as a way to have an exactly 
clear picture of exactly what their territories are, what their uh, 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 electoral body is, and where and where they do not need to contest elections anymore. Because the nationalist blocs in Bosnia are interested in homogenous holes. They want, uh, 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 you know, what's what's pejoratively referred to in Bosnia as teacup states. Uh, these sort of, uh, you know, small ethnically cleansed cantons, villages, hamlets, uh, bantustans, as, as some academics have quite astutely begun referring to them. So I'm getting this overwhelming negative approach and feeling and attitude about the Bosnian census from our guests, but we as Al Jazeera went out to Sarajevo to talk to people on the street to see how they viewed the census. Have a listen to what they said. I think država funkcionirala na svakom nivou. Da se zna koliko ima, šta ima sve. Mislim da će ova vlast s tim popisom najviše oporazovati sve što treba razumjeti. Imovinu, vikinice, stanove, uži gradsko područje i tako dalje. Znamo što se dešavalo kod nas. Sada najrovatnije ide se za tim da još uvijek se smanji broj jedni i da bi se povećao broj drugi. So, Darko, if you could sum up the national f feeling, <laughs> if there is a national feeling, that's the whole issue in, in Bosnia often, if there is a national cohesive feeling about this census, what would it be? How would you describe it? Well, uh, let me let me bring it all down, and then and then after I bring everything down, try to be optimistic later on. All right, looking forward uh, to that. So, basically, uh, to, to be honest with you, the, the fact that that what we are expressing, what we are seeing, and what what the people are telling us, and we get we got like I don't know tens, hundreds of phone calls, a lot of reports online from the people is that there's so much misuse of the census process and also the, 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 the basically the institutions are breaking their own laws while doing the census that this all seems like a very orchestrated attempt to, to manipulate the, the data. Uh, luckily, I, I personally believe and we'll see that by the end of the census is that this data, uh, the data on the ethnicity and religion might, is definitely going to be compromised but you know like as we already established I don't really think that we should care about that data because on the only thing it's going to be used is for political purposes. Uh, on the other hand uh, I, I want to believe that actually the rest of the data that we are going together will not be cor corrupt and we will be able to use it for, for all the positive sides that, that we want. On the, on the other hand which nobody can prevent even with the census and even with the, all the manipulations that are going on is that there is a growing number of people who are actually protesting against the current constitutional setup in Bosnia and are actually wanting to, to have their civic and political rights not determined by, by ethnicity in a way that it is now and also to end the discrimination that's, con that, that's basically been our constitutional setup from the, from the start of the country. Sure, and this number of people is growing the census will show it and even more the future of, of, of the of the of the society and future political movements will definitely show that this is a viable movement that will eventually change things for, for, for the better. So like you know, right. I have my doubts about the validity of the census, but overall I'm optimistic because this has shown the census campaign has shown us that there are people all over the country that are actually believing in what we are saying. And also I'm looking at Facebook comments and Facebook pictures where young Bosnians are saying that they're very happy to be Bosnian first rather than any of the other ethnic groups. Malika? Well, you're right. And, and you see those, but then you also see this pessimism. There's a tweet here from Jasmine who says, asking people to identify their differences in which the differences is what caused the problems from the start will only reinforce that. There's a Facebook comment here also, Yasmin, from Abu Amira who says, the census will highlight that Muslims are on the increase, thus must be cleansed from the Balkans, or Muslims are in the decline, finish them off and cleanse the Balkans. Either way, this sounds suspicious. And of course, we could substitute any group for Muslims in, in this Facebook comment here. So if we're seeing that, but then we're hearing from Darko that there is a groundswell of, of national unity among the people. Is it enough really to counteract this pessimism that people are saying nothing's going to happen because our politicians aren't listening? Well, I mean, I think unfortunately people in the Balkans are famously pessimistic, but <laughs> I think uh, people like Darko and people uh, like Adnan and uh, many other young activists are shining proof of the fact that there is a new generation coming up in Bosnia, a generation that at the very least wants to reach out to the rest of the world, that, 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 that doesn't want to have a future in a country that has a 40% unemployment rate and has segregated schools, right? They, they want to move beyond that. And I think 
as, as in any culture, we are steadily veering and moving towards a generational clash. I think there's a lot of uh, 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 older people, basically my parents' generation, perhaps Darko's uh, parents' generation, who basically feel like, you know, we kind of lost. We lost our way and we're exhausted, we're tired, you know, we're, we're done. And unfortunately, a lot of the younger people have been indoctrinated into these new ways of thinking, these nationalist, chauvinist rhetorics. But nevertheless, I, I, I do think there's a new generation comi uh, coming up, and I, and I do think that they're going to be necessarily the ones uh, that are going to make change, because it's not going to be our parents. Okay, so new generation. Mm -hmm. Check out my laptop here. I want you to read this tweet for me. Okay. You ready? Where am I, where am I looking? Yeah, look, look, <laughs> there. look at the monitor. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, uh, will, uh, you know, will the census be properly done? And then the letters are too small for me because I have very bad vision. So uh, it's really questioning about um, the future of the census. Some Savannah? folks. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes, uh, I can translate it for you. It says yeah, uh, some, some, some households have reported as many as 20 or 30 members. Right. Okay. So it's essentially the tweet is asking, you know, how can we even consider this uh, census to be regular and to be legitimate if we can see those types of violations essentially. So that is a question that I want to take to the post show. So thank you, Yasmin and Ivana, for doing that double translation for me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> this conversation is not over yet. So much more to talk about, about the Bosnian census. If you want to join in the conversation at AJ Stream and then tweet us, Malika will maybe read it out. But right now, she has other work to do. Here's some other stories that we're looking at on the stream. Our first leads out of India where sports fans are mourning the news of a cricket giant's retirement. 40-year-old former Indian captain Sachin Tendulkar says he will retire after playing his 200th test in November. On Twitter, every hashtag topping the trends in India mentions his retirement, from thank you Sachin to salute the legend. Fans online posted images like this to thank him for his contribution to the sport. Sandeep writes, Goodbye Sachin, the end of an era and loads of memories growing up. You're the best thing that has ever happened to cricket and youngsters. Our next leads out of South Africa where a small group of protesters has sparked major backlash online. Activists organizing under the name Red October are calling attention to what they say is oppression and violence against white South Africans. Small groups marched in several cities, releasing balloons to mark the deaths of those killed in what protesters called an epidemic of violence targeting whites. Well, hashtag Red October generated more than 40,000 mentions, but it may not have been the attention the demonstrators wanted. Polisa tweets, this Red October thing is a true insult and embarrassment to South Africa. Some white South Africans said, not in my name. Chris writes, Dear white folk, statistically, we're the richest, most employed, and least murdered race in South Africa. How exactly are we oppressed? Well, the backlash appeared to inspire unity and in rejecting the protesters' message. Trevor writes, As South Africans, we should be protesting all crime and all corruption together. We've rounded up that discussion on our website, so check it out at stream.aljazeera.com and let us know what you think. Femi? We are actually going to be doing that South Africa story, the Red October protest story. It's ripe. Next week. Mm -hmm. We don't have any guests yet. Hello. Tweet us. At AJ Stream. If you think you're going to be the perfect guest for the South Africa Red October protest story, you might end up sitting exactly where Yasmin is sitting right now. It's a comfy seat. It's, <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yasmin, is there anything? Because we're in a free-flowing conversation. There's some things we can think, this is really important. We really need to talk about this in the post-show. What have we missed? Well, I think, I mean, there's two things. One, it was a point that was raised by Adnan uh, earlier, uh, and that's the results of the census. Okay, and uh, the second? Uh, the second is the ongoing wrangling about the Constitution itself. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm going to need you to hold my hand as we go into the post-show to talk about the Bosnian Constitution. A lot of work to do there. So, moving on to the next show. On Thursday, we will be talking about the abduction of Libya's Prime Minister by rebels who may have signified who holds the upper hand on Monday. I'm sorry about that. So is Libya being ruled by the gun and who's really in control? So we'll be talking about that on our next AJ stream. Stay with us. The post show is next at stream.alzeer.com. We'll see you online. Thanks for watching.
Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. We're talking about identity politics in Bosnia and the debate over the country's ongoing population census. So let's get right back to the Constitution. <gasps> okay, the Constitution. What have we missed? Conversation and Constitution. We're going to have conversation about the Constitution. Help me out here, Yasmin. You brought that up. Why is that so critical? Well, about four years ago, the European Court of Human Rights found that uh, Bosnia's constitution was fundamentally discriminatory because, as Ivana mentioned, uh, minorities, members, for instance, of the Roma and Jewish community are unable to run for many public public posts. So for four years, the political establishment in Bosnia has been unable to come up with a solution to this problem, which to most people would seem fairly straightforward as to how it should be resolved. Uh, the European Union uh, about uh, earlier this month set a hard deadline for October 10th today for this to be resolved. Unsurprisingly, um, the political leaders in Bosnia have been unable to come to a solution once again. The point that needs to be raised, however, and this is where I think the European Union also bears a great deal of responsibility, especially now that they're threatening sanctions against Bosnia, uh, is that in attempting to create a constitution that respects the rights of minorities and provides for basic democratic access for people of minority communities, they have not actually included any members of the minority communities in these constitutional debates. So they're asking people who have explicitly said, essentially, we are not interested in respecting minority rights and have asked them to come up with a solution, which on the face of it is preposterous. Darko? I, I think actually, I think it actually gets yeah. even worse than that. Because uh, if I may just jump in really yeah, quickly, go ahead, Ivana. because I think that that uh, oftentimes, and we've we've, we've been witnesses of this over the last four years, the international community, and particularly the European Union, has been so eager to see any kind of progress mm -hmm. on this particular matter that all they're really looking for is any kind of an agreement. Yeah. And I know that uh, Yasmin had just said that uh, even the most recent discussions on this issue that had the deadline of today had just failed. And I can only say thankfully because the proposals that were coming out of the political league uh, would actually just complicate matters even more and disenfranchise the, uh, the so-called group of others uh, even, even further. And in my, in my personal opinion, would just uh, further uh, set back Bosnia back. Yeah, if, if, if I may yeah, just, just jump ahead. in there, like, you know, it would be like what they are proposing is like, you know, a game of music chairs where they finally bring in the others to the to the whole game, but they set us like 10 meters more further away mm -hmm. than anybody else is. And, and actually it's impossible to get a seat. And that's that's what the, what the whole story is. And actually everybody is only talking about how to deal with the, with the, with the con rights of constituent people's mm -hmm. ethnicities and nobody's talking about, about the others in the whole story. And, and actually, uh, I, I just want to briefly comment on, on, on the EU thing, is that actually the EU, the EU in the whole process is, has been really failing to, to even communicate with the civil society. And I know that we have been trying so hard to be a part of the process, but it's just impossible to be a part of the process. Well, we've mentioned the others. There's a tweet here uh, from Michael who says, this is a double-edged sword, this census, without recognition of different ethnicities, no minority rights. With recognition, possible discrimination. So Adnan, is there the possibility that we could see a crack between this, this three uh, nationality uh, system, ethnicity, excuse me, system? Well, to be quite honest with you, and this is where I have, uh, uh, um, I tend to disagree with some of my colleagues when we discuss the possible implications uh, of, of this census. When they say, well, if another group emerges that basically contests or challenges these three ethnic setups, it might influence the, uh, the constitutional debate. Um, uh, and this is where, where I see the problem, because so far the political elites in Bosnia have uh, grown over the period of 15, 17 years after the war have grown so distant from the grassroots, have done so irresponsible, if you want, that I don't think that they actually take into account any of the demands coming from below. What they actually are only concerned with is how to maintain the current situation or the, or the current status quo. Mm -hmm. uh, and the trouble is that this particular constitution that we have uh, uh, n right now, the Dayton constitution that even explained at the very beginning is not reflected in 1991 census it's the result of war and ethnic cleansing that's the fact nobody can deny that so 
uh, in order to change this into something that should in a way be better than what we have today, I think it requires, it requires a bit more than simply a census. And I have to say that I'm actually quite, quite, uh, 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 I'm, I'm actually quite unhappy with the fact that these questions were at all included in this. I think it was a mistake to include these identity questions in them because what we did now is we have now or uh, we are in a situation where all of the census might become invalidated by the inclusion of these questions and the speculation related to them and all the misuses of these uh, uh, forms instead of instead of getting what we really need right now and that's a snapshot of the socioeconomic situation, demographic situation. So, Ivana, you've been watching some of the census taking place. You've been out in Bosnia watching how it was being organized and run. If we could just leap forward to when the census results come out, what's your prediction? Huh. <laughs> I wish I had the crystal ball. Huh. Um, I think that you mentioned it early on that uh, some unofficial, and we have to be very explicit about this, that unofficial data from the trial, the pilot census that took place last year, seem to indicate that this number of people who would declare themselves uh, as something other than the, the three main constituent groups is going to be higher than was previously thought. Mm -hmm. Whether it's going to really be as high as a third of the population, I personally doubt it, but this is uh, probably what's going to happen. Um, and then what happens after that is anyone's guess. I think uh, in, in some ways uh, I share uh, Adnan's uh, dissatisfaction uh, about the fact that these questions were included to begin with, but now that they have, I would like to just be optimistic <laughs> for a change and really like to think that the um, that it will be really difficult to ignore uh, the the continued discrimination of this so-called uh, fourth um, constituency uh, if it really is shown that they are as large or even bigger than the third largest constituent group in Bosnia right now and that's the Croats. Yes, I mean, you heard Ivana say that it's anyone's I, guess what will, will happen next. Um, there's just a tweet here that I, I want to get in from I, Caroline who says, the census in itself is nothing to fear, but who will be responsible for acting on the results? Yasmin, I'll, I'll have you respond to that and, and then we'll go back to our hangout, but who will act on what happens from the census? Well, I mean, we can safely predict that almost whatever the result uh, okay. ends up being or whatever the numbers end up being is that the nationalist establishment within, uh, within Bosnia is going to try to spin this in their favor. Now, there's going to be very many creative ways that they're going to try to do that, and I'm sure none of us don't have uh, sufficiently creative imaginations to imagine exactly how that's going to happen. But I think what's inevitably going to happen is that the results of the census will place stress on the constitutional structure of Bosnia. And it's either going to be because of what Ivana mentioned, that we're going to have a situation where there are actually more others who are constitutionally discriminated than one of the constitutive peoples, or we're going to have the situation, as Darko was describing, where we're going to find out that the whole census or large parts of the census have been invalidated due to all these shady goings-on that have been reported each and every day. Uh, I don't think that what we're going to have at the end of the day is going to be sort of a statistical document that we can, you know, uh, 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 confidently move forward with. Darko. To clear things up on the on the numbers, basically briefly, uh, there have been three uh, separate researches, independent ones that have been done on the on the representative samples in Bosnia, and they show that we should expect like some one fifth or twenty percent of the people who would either not declare on the census or would declare elsewhere other than the three main ethnicities. So like anything that differs, differentiate that a lot would actually show us that the census was basically manipulated and the data would, shouldn't be trusted. So like I think that would be the basis for start. And actually I, I tend to agree with, with Andan very much on the fact that the census will be just the start or a potential start for something that takes a lot more effort. And actually, you know, like you need a two thirds majority in, in, the par in the state parliament to change the constitution and it has been done only once so far in Bosnia for a, for, a, for a thing that was not that questionable as this. So like we, we have a lot, of, a lot of way ahead of us to do things. Census will not like, you know, jump, it, will, it might jump start but it will not finish anything. Darko, have you completed the census for yourself, your questionnaire? No, actually I haven't. I, I've been chasing away the enumerators from my door because my data is not secure with them in their houses and I'm <laughs> waiting until they solve the issue or 
I will do it the last day in the municipality where my where my census form will be secured. All right, that's a wonderful visual to leave us with. Thank you so much, Adnan. Have you completed your census? Question. Oh yes, I have. I have successfully, uh, despite all the difficulties uh, relating to the fact that the people who came the enumerator plus the instructor were not properly instructed. Um, so I had to help them out, uh, fill in what they were supposed to help me out, filling in. Um, so I can tell you that since now that I witnessed the process uh, 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 by myself, um, I'm not confident that this is going to prove valid in the end. Uh, we will have very many problems with that. And I said, again, um, if we put aside the question on this, uh, uh, the identity question as we like to call them here, um, the, the fact remains that in, in this process we are going to lose a lot of reliable socioeconomic data and that is going to be the problem. Would it be impolite of me to ask you what you described yourself as? On your question not at all not at all definitely i i declared myself as bosnian and herzegovinian okay darko what did you describe yourself as or what, or what will you to... sorry because you're still chasing remunerators away from your house <laughs> yeah, i'm 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm probably going to say the same as, as adam did okay very good Vanya, I, i'm guessing that you couldn't do a census because you're actually based in washington dc right Yes, that's correct. What? But uh, I was there when when one was conducted in the uh, in my husband's family. Yes. Okay. But and what would you I describe would, yourself as? Bosnian and Herzegovinian. Oh, we've, all the way. We're getting some consensus. I don't know what Yasmin would describe himself as if you were allowed to complete your census. What would it be? Uh, I'd that that's a tricky question. I mean, in this moment, emotionally, I would probably say that I'm a refugee, um, or that I'm part of the diaspora. Um, but I'm certainly sympathetic to declaring Warren's self as Bosnian and Herzegovinian. There isn't space in enough on the questionnaire for that. It would all be the others. It would all be the others. We would all the be other. the others, absolutely. Yeah, the other. Wow. Thank you for allowing us to share in the complexity of this conversation. Malika, a closing thought from our online community? Yeah, I'll give you a closing tweet from Zlatko, who tweets in, Being born in Bosnia, my hope is that people there can realize the world is one, human race is one. Let's come together. Thank you very much to our excellent guests on set. We have Yasmin Munjanovic. On Google Plus, we had Adnan Huskic. On also Google Plus, we had Ivania Svetkovic Bidrovic. And on Skype, Darko Barkin. Thank you very much to everybody. So, on the next show, the Thursday's abduction of Libya's Prime Minister by rebels may have signified who holds the upper hand. So, is Libya being ruled by the gun and who is really in control? Good questions. Good questions for Monday's show. Until then, you'll see us online at stream.com. Thanks for watching. Take care.